German tanks into the thick of it. Their mission is to take and hold the heavily defended Kalkar Ridge, clearing the way for the main attack aimed at driving the Germans back across the Rhine River. But even though they're outnumbered, the Germans stubbornly stand their ground. We got to the top of the ridge, and then all of a sudden, wham, it was daylight, and the Germans were shooting. We fired on from our left flank and in front. And I can remember particularly this barn on our left flank. And the doors were coming open. And we were yelling at the gunner, the doors, the doors are opening. What Hale has spotted is the infamous 88, Germany's most powerful anti-tank weapon. The 88s fire armor-piercing shells, able to penetrate almost 100 millimeters of steel at distances up to 1,500 meters. And the Canadians are well within range. I don't know about you or anyone else who has ever looked down the barrel of an 88. When it fires, you can actually see it coming at you. It's like a, a rolling ball, like a fist coming. You can see the sparks coming off. But... It passed over our tank and cut off the aerial within a foot of the, the tank behind us. Then we instantly fired just as soon as he had fired at us. Looking behind us, the Grenadier Guard tank that was liaison, his tank got hit. There's an immediate fusion of the metal into a cherry red glow where it's, where it's hit with a black hole in the middle of it. And the crew commander was coming out the hatch and the ammunition exploded and he just sort of threw up his arms and then collapsed down into the turret. There were still six of us left on the top and we were all firing forward and to the left wing. And the Germans started cutting down the barn, the farmhouse structure. They were ripping it down and we were using it for cover. We were pulling out and shooting and so on. We couldn't withstand the, the amount of fire that was coming at us. We were going to get all get knocked out. The infantry had dug in and could defend their position. So we fired a, a smoke shell for five of the other tanks. One at a time, they pulled off the ridge as we blanked the left flank. time the, the buildings were nearly gone and just burning rubble and we decided to pull out and the tank in the heavy mud we put it in first gear and pulled ahead but it sort of snuffled under and stopped and a German shell uh, fired right across in front of us and we started moving forward uh, again. And then finally there was another shot came at us. And Butler was in the turret and he was standing there and he just sort of fell on the floor on his ass and he said, oh. And it had a strange sound to it, you know, sort of, a, it didn't have the crack and it had a whir. And I said, what happened to that? He said, you wouldn't believe it, but that was coming for us and it hit a hydro pole. Started out with a squadron and 19 tanks and one liaison tank, and we wound up with six. And that's my first introduction to the Rhineland battle. <laughs>